This is yours. Hold on. Check it, check it, check it out. Go with me, man. Hi everybody and welcome to Ask TensorFlow. This is the show where we answer your questions about TensorFlow. I'm Lawrence Moroni, a developer advocate on TensorFlow, and I have with me... Hi, Magnus Hitzten. I'm also a developer advocate on TensorFlow. We've got lots of fascinating questions today, so should we get right down to them? Yeah, sounds good. Let's see the first one. All right, so this question is from Claudia in Seattle. And the question is, I keep hearing about nightly builds having the newest, greatest stuff. Should I use these? And how do I use them? I'd like to know that myself. Yeah. <laughs> Well, TensorFlow is open source and it's rapidly evolving. And often you want the latest features for your research and development, but you don't want to wait for a new release. Okay. And given that TensorFlow is open source, you can always pull the latest source code and build it from uh, for yourself, of course. Uh, however, building the code can be slow and it can impact your productivity if you have to do it very often, like uh, every day or so. Right. Um, so there are actually, for convenience, two builds that are being done for you on a daily or nightly hence the name, basis. One for TensorFlow and one for TensorFlow with GPU additions. All you have to do to get them is to do pip install tf-nightly or pip install tf-nightly-gpu on a clean system, and you'll be good to go. I personally like to have two machines, one with the latest nightly builds so I can try stuff out, and one with the most stable release so I have something stable to work from all the way. Makes sense, I do exactly the same myself. Our next question comes from Joshi on Stack Overflow. And the question is, the instructions tell me to install TensorFlow using pip, but I get an error where it says there's no matching distribution. I don't understand this, can you help me? Well, there's actually quite a few things and it's quite an obscure error message, but yeah. for me, I've seen this error message uh, with a couple of things. Uh, the first and most obvious where I've seen it is actually to take a look at your version of pip that you're using. The TensorFlow site says that you need to have at least version 3.1. And this has knocked me out a few times too. If you run pip with a dash v switch, you'll see your version. If it's older than this, then upgrade. And it's always good to go to tensorflow.org and just take a look at what the most recent recommendations are, just in case this video is a little bit older by the time you're watching it. Um, also, be sure to use the version of pip that matches your version of Python. On some machines, you could actually have two versions of Python, 2.7 and 3.x, and then the pip command might be mapped to the other version. So I always like to say if I'm using 2.7 to use pip, and if you're using 3.x to use pip3. So in, if you have 3.x and that's the only one installed, then the pip command should default to pip3. So by typing pip, you're actually getting pip3, but you really never know. So if your pip or pip3 installed TensorFlow failed, then the next thing you can do is to try the dash dash upgrade switch. So it's pip install dash dash upgrade TensorFlow, that type of thing. And finally, if you're still having problems, then you can use the URL of the TensorFlow binary as a switch to pip. So you can find the latest URLs, the latest binaries on the tensorflow.org site in the installing section. I've put a link to it underneath. So you just install and actually point directly at that binary and then hopefully you're not gonna have any more mismatches and you'll be good to go. Mm -hmm. So good question, I, I feel your pain. Uh, so should we take another question? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. So this question is from Adnan on Twitter, at SandCastleKit. That's a good Twitter handle. <laughs> So the question is, anyone know a free website where I can train TEF models on the cloud? Well, so, if you can find any, can you let me know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are a few things you can do. If you want to learn about training models in the cloud, my personal favorite is to use Google's Colab. You can see the link below. From within uh, Google Drive, install the Colab add-on, and this will give you a Jupyter Notebook environment on which you can run TensorFlow code. There's a lot of public data sets that you can train for. I actually wrote up a tutorial that you can see in the links below, and it's about how you can train a neural network on TensorFlow for using CSV data. In my case, I used it for classifying breast cancer cells. But if you've got CSV data, you can use your own CSV data and easily modify the code. And it should run happily in Colab. So go be sure to check it out. And there's something for Kaggle users as well, right? Exactly. So if you're not a user of Kaggle, you should definitely check Kaggle out. Kaggle provides a notebook environment too called Kaggle Kernels. And in Kaggle Kernels, you can write pretty much Jupyter code like you could do 
anywhere else. So that's a great alternative as well if you want to do serverless uh, hacking on TensorFlow. Yeah, these online notebooks are just becoming amazing. I'm just really learning all this stuff myself for the first time, and it's just being able to go to my browser and have a notebook and run code, and all the dependencies are there, and maybe even able to use things like GPUs. It's like it's phenomenal. Yeah, so it's amazing. I love it. So should we take the next question? Yeah, let's go on. All right, so the next question is from Rebecca in Hong Kong, and it's Google has cloud AI toolkits as well as TensorFlow. Which should I use? Well, that's a really good question from yeah. Rebecca. And you know, there's lots of great stuff in the Google Cloud Platform, and where we have like Cloud AI that provides machine learning services, pre-trained models, and the ability for you to build your own tailored models. But guess what? That all uses TensorFlow. We're one big happy family. And if you use Cloud, though, you can also get access to lots of other great things, like hardware that's optimized for machine learning. You might have heard of TPUs, TensorFlow Processing Units which are processors that are geared for ML with TensorFlow. You can use these in the cloud with the Google Cloud Platform. There's also lots of services for specific scenarios, things such as cloud video intelligence makes videos searchable and discoverable. Or there's the Cloud Vision API that you can use to analyze the contents of your actual images. It's really cool with some of the demos you see for that, where you take a photo, and upload, you upload it, and the Cloud API tells you what's in that image. There's also the Cloud Speech API, which is great for converting audio to text. And there's a whole lot more. You've probably used Google Translate. That's also built on all of this technology. But if you want to get down to the nuts and bolts of machine language, training classifiers, regressors, and the like, then TensorFlow is the API that you can use to do it yourself. The bottom line is that it's not an either or an or. You can actually use both. But great question, Rebecca. Thank you so much. Well, thanks, everybody. This has been a really fascinating show. Some lots of great questions in there. And if you have any more questions for us, remember, please post them on social media with the Ask TensorFlow hashtag. And we'll be looking out to answer them in an episode coming very, very soon. Thank you so much.